Good morning, Vancouver. This is Sogi live from Liberty One Studios. Once again, we have Maya Kanan in our show. He's the creator of Mayanomics, the motion of trillion dollar economics. Today's podcast is about individualism versus collectivism. Today, he's going to let us know what's his perspective about individualism and what does he think about collectivism. He's going to let us know what does he mean by a cooperative society, a cooperative model, and why he has chosen cooperative model for his new venture called Manch Fools. What are the key things and the key thoughts behind Manch Fools? Maya, first thing first, how are you? I'm doing better than good, Dr. Sogi. How about you? I'm good as well. Thanks for asking. Maya, could you tell us why you have chosen society model for your new venture? What was the thought behind? What motivated you to go for a society model, a cooperative model? Why uh, society structure, right? Um, why did I take the society structure? Um, consortium structure. Last 15, 20 years, I have been witnessing um, the two sides of the coin, the liberal side and the conservative and the libertarian side, right? Basically, the republic oriented and democracy oriented side. The republic or basically individual liberty and uh, individual is more powerful theoretically. Individuals should be more powerful than a collective group of people, including government. That's what republic is. So the republic stands for it, individual liberty powerful individual is more powerful than a government or a group of people on the other hand the democracy works this way where at, at least in um, the liberal democratic um, group in america uh, a group is more powerful than an individual right which people like me clearly understand that is wrong. A group cannot be powerful than an individual, but they look at it from a different perspective. They say that we protect in, uh, interests of an individual, a yeah, yeah, less powerful individual, by making them part of a bigger community to increase their power so that they can go and fight with the other side. So basically, we are going to make uh, one guy is so poor so uh, small guy, he, there is another guy who is very powerful guy. How a yeah, small guy is going to fight with a big guy? Only way he can, because he is powerful, money, muscle power, political power, everything, he's powerful. How do you really restore the liberty of the small guy? Only the small guy can go to uh, a group of people and he attach himself to the majority or 51 percentage of the people come together to force something upon this guy who belongs to the 49 percentage, correct? So I'm, we are standing up for you. We collectively increase the power of an individual. That's the way uh, the, the um, democratic liberalism, right, um, is projected. Now, both may sound very good based on the, the view and point of view, right? Based on that, both sides will, will be seen uh, right. Now, the problem with the current world, right? Um, the, the, the social democratic liberal people, they are doing a fundamental mistake of um, make, creating a crony liberalism, crony socialism, because the corporates are utilizing their this opportunity to create a phony collectivism, right? So what's, uh, uh, that's how Facebook, Google kind of uh, 
organizations are being hijacked long back, right? It's been by the the powerful lobby of um, individuals. Uh, actually, they are cap they are capitalists under the cover up of a socialist. So they use this collectivism, bring a lot of people uh, under them to make a majority to force upon things against the other side. Right now, they don't. They're never going to like uh, individualism. No government is going to like individualism because they wanted to force upon things to their uh, citizens. No corporate is going to like uh, consumers who are powerful. They wanted consumers who are simply um, follow and uh, become consuming things and uh, just shut up their mouth and keep uh, doing things. They love employees. They don't like con contractors and independent consultants because they raise a voice. They don't like small businesses because small businesses will um, be very independent, very individual. They can actually uh, put um, terms uh, to the big guys. So they would like to thrash the small businesses. So everything that is happening around the world right now, you will see that clearly the indication of um, you know such things happening. And it happens every hundred years, right? Now, the problem with the we all know individual, you know, an individual should be powerful. Every human wants to be free, liberated. There's no doubt about it. The problem is the, uh, the Republican side, the Republic side, the, uh, the liberty side, the, their own strength, which is individualism, actually works against themselves as, as well. Because since they are too individual, since they are too individual, it becomes very difficult for them to come together. That's a problem. Because in order to get into fight on the other side, the other side is collectively coming. How can you go and individually fight, right? You can't individually you know, fight with the people who are collectively coming, coming on to you. So that collectivism itself is a problem with these, uh, you know, people, you know, who stand for the republic and uh, liberty. Now, this is the reason. Since I studied this for a long time, following the politics, especially in the U.S. on the republican and the libertarian side and all, I know, um, you know, the libertarian principles, philosophies, economic principles are the best, and that's. The that's the way the world should be operating. But the problem I see is they don't know how to get together. That's the reason. I wanted to create a unique model, yeah, an alternate model of engagement for people of uh, liberty. So people who love to have liberty and republic-oriented society, I invite them to be part of the um, the cooperative consortium styled institutions that I create under my canon. Um, the example of Menschwurst, the example of um, Agrokarma for agriculture. I'm creating multiple such institutions where individuals with liberty, freedom, and individualism, they still, we still give them all the power that an individual requires and still bring them together through consensus, right? Consensus is the key. So in, in socialism, it works like in the social democratic system, it works like rule, one rule, cookie cutter rule applicable for all the people in the system, correct? The, the major, you know, they make the majority and then they try to force upon the remaining 49%, the same cookie cutter rule. But uh, in the consortium styled uh, society that we are floating, everything is driven by con consensus. It's not rule, consensus mechanism. So, uh, but there has to be some kind of a collectivism as well. So it, this is a collectivism of individualism, correct? People come individually, but then they get into consensus, accept this, not accept this and finally they all come together saying that okay this is what for this particular situation this is our consensus for another reason another uh, situation 
this is what we consent to. Everything has to go as a consensus, consensus, consensus in this uh, kind of system, which is uh, pretty much missing. Um, that's why they continue to fail to uh, failing, you know, uh, to put a fight with the big guys, including, you know, um, companies uh, standing up to the uh, crony socialist organizations like uh, Google or Facebook kind of companies. Uh, yes, the lawsuits is the is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a one thing. Um, this uh, individual collectivism through consensus comes through, but we need to see a lot more things. Even the lawsuits coming with a, a class action suit um, with uh, with uh, hundreds of people joining, that has to be a kind of a society. If we bring the society to take it up, it's going to be much more powerful. So you know that's where um, the key is basically um, society of individuals. We don't leave individualism, but we need to form a society as well. Through, they all come together, transact with each other, uh, deal with each other through consensus. Got it. Maya, as I understand, in collectivism, you know, people come for something they need. But in individualism, we don't have that kind of thing. They don't need it. So how come you are collecting them together under manch force? Like what is their need to come there? What drives them to be a part of manch force? That's a great question. So um, everybody has a need. Um, only thing is, um, this is what my mentor Zig Ziglar uh, always says, an individual, nobody should claim uh, that it's, uh, you know, I'm a self-made person because starting from the, um, you get, uh, you know, to, from brushing to use the toilet to uh, get yourself dressed up and go to work uh, driving the car. Everything, you are being helped by other people. You are not alone in this world. So you may claim, I did everything by myself, which is uh, completely wrong. You just are not uh, doing things by yourself. There are a lot of other people who are helping you. The only thing is, the government is coming and telling, right? Or government or big you know, uh, institutions. I know some of the, I don't want to name them, but some political leaders, right? Say that, oh, we build the road for the businesses to go and drive the car, right? To go to deliver the food or deliver the goods. So that means the government, you know, without government, no business works, right? That kind of an extreme view of um, social democratic uh, politicians or even you know, common democratic uh, supporter, right? Uh, but we are not adapting that, right? But we also understand there is some point there, right? Uh, there is no uh, individual, you know, saying that I'm all successful all by myself. From the morning till the evening, good night, you go to bed, somebody else is supporting you, somebody else is uh, doing things for you. So um, there are many, what all we are saying is um, in the individualism, uh, you, you say that um, you need, uh, you don't need for support for many things. We leave you alone, right? So when it comes to society structure, like menstrual or even agrikarma, right? Um, we, don't put rules of engagement, right? Completely, you are dedicated to us. You are employee of Mensch Force. You do completely everything only with us. That's not what we are forcing, correct? That means we recognize there are many things a consultant will be able to do by himself or herself outside the society we leave them alone. That's where we give them their own freedom and liberty. But everything that they can do individually, they can do better in the society. We make sure of that. 
for example, an individual consultant going on getting uh, insurance, right? It's going to cost them a lot as an individual business insurance because you are an individual consultant. You need a business insurance. If they want to deal with a big corporate, remember, big corporate is a big social individual organization or a private organization. You want to deal with them. You just, that's exactly the point, right? How can you go and deal with them if you don't have the collectivism coming and supporting you? Here, the, this, the society collectivism comes in the form of we have a negotiating power with the insurance companies because a group of uh, consultants coming together will be able to negotiate a better deal with a private organization. So in that case, the society wins much better than the individual, right? Still, the beneficiary is an individual, correct? We're not going to touch that part. The government, the, the other side, the insurance company will deal with the individual. We are not going to put any restrictions there. We remove restrictions. We are against the restrictions, right? But when it comes to negotiating the terms and the price, um, the collectivism comes. That's the beauty of the consensus mechanism, correct? If you look at the democratic system, the rule will be enforced by some few corporate guys, correct? Then um, everybody else comply with it. In this case, it's not. Even the negotiation, uh, all the individual consultants will be part of the consensus mechanism. If, uh, if you take uh, insurance as uh, one example, there are other examples uh, as well. It's not just only insurance in order to dealing with the, even the service pricing, negotiating um, based on different uh, situations, right? It is uh, gonna be much uh, easier to do this way, especially in mensch force, uh, which is driven by the consensus uh, automated algorithms and uh, smart contracts. Um, it's uh, very easy and very much more powerful and uh, uh, reversed in terms of uh, contracting and uh, terms and price negotiations. Got it. Thank you. Uh, there's another question, Maya. From, I mean, uh, if I look at Manch Falls uh, from a society perspective, it, it must be decentralized in a flat structure. Right. But in corporates, we generally have a hierarchical structure. Right. right, where somebody controls the other one That's and right. make sure that, that you know, the line of engagement is controlled by, not only by rules, but by power authority. But then that authority and power make sure that somebody is responsible to get the work done. That's correct. Right? That's correct. But when we go to a flat structures where everybody is individual, right, and individualism prevails there, when something you have to give to the society from the work perspective, like something you know, a deliverable to the to the to your client, how it's controlled from the responsibility uh, perspective or viewpoint. I hope you're getting my question. You know right. that right. somebody has to be responsible. If we all are individuals right. and in a flat decentralized structure then at one point an individual can say, sorry, mate, I tried doing it, I couldn't do it. And then again, that's a weak link in the overall structure. How, how, do, you, how do you see this as a, a solvable or a relatable question here? Sure, um, this has uh, always been a question where everybody, you know, will, will come the very first uh, thing looking at mensch was how it is possible to deliver if you everybody's an individual right um now we understand even in the corporates everybody is an individual remember this everybody is an individual okay we are all born individuals it just your liberty is taken away by someone okay without you handing over, correct? If you understand that philosophy very well, it's all the same. It's all the same. Whether you work for a corporate or you 
you know, work for a society. From that principle, you are all individual. Are they mixing you together, two consultants together and make one guy? No. Are they attaching 100 consultants attached, physically attached? A consultant with one manager? No. A manager is an individual. The vice president is an individual. And every person working in every employee, team leader, everybody is an individual. Now, how they are um, getting uh, things delivered? Don't say that, um, you know, um, oh, it's because the, there is a command, chain of uh, commands. Because of that, it works. The guy from the top, you know, passes the command to the next guy, next guy, and next guy. Because of that, the delivery is done. This is the wrong perception, how the delivery of, uh, you know, um, the projects are done. Even in corporate structure, the delivery is only done when an individual has a, you know, his or her discretionary power to, to do something extra, right? Go extra mile. That person is the one who actually adds value to the overall deliverable. If you force people, yes, the time will be utilized, but not the, but not the deliverable. Um, unfortunately, most of the projects fail, okay? It's proven. IT projects, okay, information technology projects, most of them, most of them, more than 70% of them, uh, um, the budget is uh, much more higher. And um, many, uh, almost 50% uh, of them literally fail. There are some cases, uh, many cases, where um, there are 80 percentage failure rate in, uh, in IT projects, in certain technologies, right? So what do you mean by delivery? The, the, the whole thing is running because of the uh, money is being used as a medium here where people are just simply consuming it without uh, delivering the value. Somehow, um, you know, this game continues. Anyway, that's a different topic, but I wanted to touch, you know, touch up a little bit so that, you know, you guys understand it. Uh, coming back to the core question. So how it, we are going to deliver if we give a lot of power to individuals to think? Like the corporates, you know, people are given uh, much more. In corporate, they will, their liberty is taken away unnecessarily by a manager, by a vice president, right? And they try to come with some rules, restrictions and all. The most thing they are going to threaten them with the money, monetization, correct? The, in the name of salary. And now, which, which is the driver? The driver is, I lose something, so person goes and delivers. I gain something, a person will go and deliver much better too. I feel good. I feel good. I don't lose anything. And I have everything to gain. If we give three these three feelings to an individual, corporates give threat. You lose the salary. You lose the job. Right? So you would have to come and work. Mostly that's the case, except for a few managers, good managers who encourage them, you know, a uh, few corporate cultures, which encourage people to feel good. But mostly it is the fear of loss that makes people to work. Fear of loss, fear of loss. People will work exactly minimum things that they have to do within the time frame. Most of the time, it is just the time they put in, not even you know good deliverable. So the corporates work, you know, gains on the clients of the corporates gains on the minimum they get with the maximum budget. Maximum budget, minimum output. That's the way it runs there. Coming to the society, our mensch force structure. We work on three things. We don't threaten by, there is no threat of uh, losing something. 
there is no salary loss thing. From the beginning, our individuals were being treated, trained very well to convert their skills into tangible output. So there is no uh, insecure feeling on losing something. Then second thing is we um, share the profit, maximum profit, because we get rid of the whole struck hierarchical structure of middleman, both inside the organization as well as outside. So obviously everything is to gain and we make every consultant to be a stakeholder in the whole project. They, they become part of the project. Uh, the way they write the smart contract with the with the you know engagement uh, within the organization, um, they become stakeholder. Okay, so obviously everything everything to gain, nothing to lose, everything to gain. The loss is only the time they may put in, correct? But that's not a big deal. They choose which time, which project they have put in. So mostly they take that calculated risk. It's just only the uh, everything to gain, make big money out of it, right? So they get energized. The third thing is the most important thing is the liberty, the freedom of thoughts. So since there is no um, boss here, there's no manager you need to fear of, the guy is not, the person is not going to take the liberty from you. Your liberated mind is so powerful and you will give your discretionary power to the table. You're not going to give your minimum time. A consultant will not bring the minimum time to the project, but the discretionary power. Every individual has a discretionary power to bring to the table. That is the magic, okay? That will magically ha happen in terms of uh, men's force consultants. So the all the three aspects are very positive. This itself will guarantee an individual to come and put, you know, maximize the potential outcome. This is the major thing, right? And at the same time, at the same time, the second part of your question was there has to be somebody to deliver it. Oh, we understand it. But there is an individual in Mensch Force. Okay. We are not, we are not saying every consultant uh, we are opening the door to client to deal with. We are um, there is a there is a leader not a boss, there is a leader, okay? There is a leader in the uh, Mensch for system. We allow every society to create their own leadership internally, but there is a minimum leadership that we, are, we, uh, we do introduce. That person is either a principal partner or an independent partner, Mensch for partner. There is a person, okay? There is a role. Um, that role is it's like a manager, like a delivery manager, but not work, you know, will not work as a manager, but work as a leader, honing the skills of the people, working together with a group of consultants for the project. So every project, client project, we will provide an opportunity for the client. Hey, uh, you wanted to, if it is a bigger project, we ourselves will, you know, give the choice of which partner they want to work with. Or uh, if it is a tiny work, the client says that we do have leaders in, in house. We have our managers. We only want to deal with an individual consultant. Then we let them to deal directly with the consultants because in Mensch Force, consultants are the uh, building block. So basically what we call type A, which is a staff org model, our consultants will deal directly with the client managers. So we give all the three legs of our consultant, the beautiful three power uh, parts of our consultant. No fear, everything to gain, and beautiful individual discretionary power bringing to the table. Everything is going to be a gain, big gain for our client to, to put their own managers to get the work done. Under type B, if we uh, win a project, we bid on a project where we develop uh, and deliver in house, um, what we call it as a type B project or a statement of work project or an outsourced project or a managed services project, these kind of a project we assign or we let uh, partners to compete and bid for such kind of a project, right? 
And if the partner and the group of consultants or the you know are, are, are involved in the pre-sales process and the entire project will be provided to them and that principal partner or an independent partner will be responsible for overall delivery of the project okay in addition to individuals coming with the individual responsibility and the motivation to deliver right and uh, the the partner will take care of it okay and the uh, final thing um there is also definitely a contract right without contracting nothing nothing works you got to understand everything is driven by smart contracts smart contracts are attached to the legal contracts as well the law of contracts is not completely ap applicable here an individual is responsible and it's also we don't we don't use the word punishment but they have to have the liability as well every consultant will have to sign or you know being part of a project not just to only gain but not take uh, take in the loss of the project of course they have to take part in the liability of the project as well when there is a freedom freedom is not free right it comes with a cost right the cost is responsibility right so we will uh, keep in the consultants and partners accountable responsible and liable great that was a, that was a great explanation now i totally understand now that you you know reshaping restructuring and remodeling the work culture structure and it's a uh, you know sort of uh, conventional formation you're rechanging it glad someone is doing it really but that kind of thought is hard to put in into practice and into practicality maya one last question for you here uh, how do you qualify your consultants how do you say that oh this consultant is allowed to join the society and this one is not I'm primarily asking for the ones you want to reject. How would you reject consultants request for becoming a part of a society? Because once you reject, that means someone is controlling it, right? So it's so the liberty doesn't allow an individual to walk into a society where we say this society is for individuals. And even if you have to uh, uh, reject a call of a consultant for joining what are the parameters you look at or what are the arguments you give back to the consultant stating that you are not allowed to come here how do you define that how can you explain it to me right now sure yeah um that's a it's a very important question because um uh in order to create a system like this where um, there is no uh, power center. Um, if uh, uh, if we let some HR person to reject somebody, then you are putting the power in the hands of the HR person. If you are putting the power in the hands of a finance guy, then probably you know rules set and rules, and the, you know your membership guy, you are putting power too much power into an individual to reject. Correct. So. It's a critical question, very important question to answer. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to explain this. And because a lot of people out there might have this thing, right? If I travel and tomorrow something happens to me, if I'm being kicked out of the society, correct? Um, that's a great opportunity for me to answer. Now, first of all, um, we do not reject anyone Right, based on anything specific predetermination of a bunch of rules. Because we don't know. We only invite individuals, but we put a levels of people walking in, correct? So it is like um, a big, um, you know, castle, right? It's a fort, right? We open the door, the main door of the fort, okay? To the be you know to the or let's say marketplace right instead of castle like say big marketplace you open the main door people get into it 
and uh, they can investigate they can try to do things few things here and there smaller things like a guest right coming learn things how the society functions we invite people to see how the society functions the society one uh, has to be um an individual has to first of all understand how a cooperative society functions unfortunately current generation uh, most of the people do not especially the tech world most people do not have such kind of an understanding of how a cooperative system works so we put them into the learning process right we invite them as a guest investigate for some time then we open door for uh, people to become a uh, kind of what we call it as a denizen member basically you stay where you are you don't want to you know like a small guy like a bronze level you know we call it as a minimum level get started with it and uh, start working with the teams correct start delivery correct small small activities you can do some micro jobs and on that process right um, you yourself will understand right if for example if a, if a consultant comes and uh, calls for a, hey nobody invited me for any meeting the then our our society group is going to correct that person saying that oh do you want a meeting then you will initiate it right let's see who else is who wants to have this meeting you can say oh there has to be somebody taking care of these things it's not somebody it's you right that's a primary culture so um it's very difficult we have seen we have witnessed a lot even in the last one year of um, um launching uh, we did have a lot of uh, problems in terms of people having a wrong understanding or uh, no absolutely no understanding of how it works because everybody is been given things uh, by through instructions by somebody right so uh, we don't reject anybody up front we um, the call, there is a, an individual Uh, as long as uh, they have the right skills they registered themselves under that category uh, some you know we don't say oh we only take uh, information technology consultants this is a system of consultants right uh, it doesn't say technology consultants you could be a consultant of a business it you register yourself right as a guest come and put your profile and get you know get yourself and start uh, you know uh, whatever the levels outside basically guest level you start collaborating we introduce the culture of collaboration learning through the collaborative environment how it works and all at a guest level say about 3 months right then we invite the person to become a denizen member and we hey why not uh, start engaging in commercial projects right um you have to be fair for the other people so you need to get into some uh, denizen level start um working on some micro project but still you have to only uh, focus you got to, we are not going to stop anyone to register for any skills any project they are all free as long as you have the skills you have the ability to deliver it and uh, how do we filter it um we filter through the mechanism of pre sales process because we don't want anybody to claim the uh, such a skill exists there is a self assessment test available online by which they themselves will fail automatically right to qualify that no intervention no human intervention algorithms the automated test will keep certifying them at every level so it becomes easier for the partner to choose the consultant not just by accepting rejecting based on their resumes based on if they like it or not like the person the algorithm says the system says this person qualifies at this level right and uh, automatically um, you know the person will be available for the project we don't let at the discretion of the partner or a manager to recognize the person the recognize the person will be recognized 
at a level, skill level, certain skill level of a certain technology and certain business domain or a certain vertical uh, automatically by the system. So without an intervention of anybody rejecting them, a person can keep qualifying through the blockchain system. Remember, this is uh, not just only the artificial intelligence system to do all these things, but we also have a blockchain technology where uh, nobody can tamper with anybody's record. Once it is qualified, uh, this is the person uh, through the certification process or um, qualification. We don't like the word certification, but qualification process, it will be permanently recorded within the Mensch 4 system because Mensch 4 is powered by the Karma Capsule Network, um, you know, the unique uh, blockchain AI uh, network. So obviously it will be um, there. So the qualification process will take care of this, uh, this problem and nobody, no manager or a HR person, all will be coming there to help, not to dictate terms or uh, enforce anything or get into the power of accepting and rejecting. And the clients will have the ability to accept or reject because client is outside of the society. So obviously, uh, when we present to the client, not only the resume, automatically Menchforce will provide the background information, internal uh, assessments, automated algorithm-based internal assessment of a person without the prejudice or without the bias of any, any individual the AI system will present the whole nine yards of a consultant to the client. Then it will leave it to the client to do the interview, which we have a limit. We can't force society, our uh, business model to the client. Although we do tell the client very clearly, this is a society and this is how we function. And that's the reason they also come, correct? Uh, to engage with us in, instead of going to a corporate. So obviously, you know, there is no restrictions. Everything is uh, levels. An individual walk into the levels, keep qualifying themselves, keep honing their skills, and collaborate and cooperate with the peer uh, workers as well as with the uh, partner and the client. Wow. Great. That was, again, comprehensive and deep explanation, Maya. You give us such wonderful insights about how the industries are behaving and what directions they are on. Tell me, how much knowledge do you have? I mean, with your kind of knowledge, with years of experience, I believe you have so much to give to this world. No doubt. Um, I feel always glad when I call you River of Information. I wish I could have asked you more. It's, uh, it's always the feeling that, oh, I could have asked him a few things more. But due to time constraints, I'm going to sign off with you. I'm going to say thank you, Maya. Thanks for coming here. I'm going to shoot you an email. I'm going to ask you to come next time. We're going to discuss about the other topics. Please let me know your availability. I'll let you go, Maya. Thank you for coming to Sogi Life. Thank you, Dr. Sogi. It's always my pleasure sharing podium with you. You bring in wonderful topics to discuss. I love it. And uh, I look forward to have uh, more such discussions. Until then, have a wonderful day. See you. Bye. Thank you for listening to this podcast with your hosts, Dr. Sergi and lovely guest, Maya Kanan. We hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the knowledge about cooperative society models and consortiums. We hope that this knowledge will come handy for you guys some way or the other. If you're keen to know more, do join us next week. As always, you can head over to Maya Khan and Broadcasting Network to sign up to his email list, as well as check all the links and resources. That's all for now, folks. See you next time.